MapMagic 2 introduced an expose feature, but in version 2.1 it has undergone some changes. First, I'd like to mention how it works and what exactly it does, and then we'll say a couple of words of how and where it could be used. The new system is actually called Expose Override System. This is because it consists of two parts. One part is actually Expose. It links some node variable with entity of a given name, and Override part assigns the new value to the entity of this name. Like a variable in this pseudocode, in first line it is created and initialized, and then it is applied to change some other value. Let me show you how it's done in practice. I'll use the template graph, and now I'm going to expose, say, the erosion iterations value. First of all, I will create a new variable and assign a value to it. I select my graph in Editor, the graph itself, not MapMagic object, and an inspector open up our hidden variables tab. Here I click Add button. It will open up the new variable window. In the name field, I've got to concrete a variable name. It could be anything like ERGN. And since iterations is an integer, it's better to switch type to int, but if you won't do it, it will round flow to int automatically. I click OK and here you can see the new variable appeared in the list. We can even change it, but it doesn't affect anything yet. It's still not used in graph. And then I'll do an expose part. I right click on its name or field and select Value Expose in a menu. Here you can see an expose window appeared. We can find information about node unique ID number, field name and its type, channel, it would be X, Y or Z if I expose a vector, and index in case I expose an array value. I type ERGN here again and you can see that the information string shows that it's OK and the value will be 3 since it rounds. 2.52 to 3. Now if I change the ERGN value, you can see that the terrain is changing with it. A field now has got an expose mark, and instead of a value, exposed variable name or expression is displayed. We can quickly access expose window by simply clicking on this field. I'll make a small digression to pay your attention to the way noise node intensity and size work. They literally change only the intensity and only the size. When you lower intensity value, the terrain becomes flat, and when you lower the size, the terrain becomes spiky. Unrelated parameters are useful for tuning noise effect, but what if we want to adjust the uniform scale of some noise generator? So, first of all, I will expose an intensity value. I will name it Scale. However, I started directly from Expose and have not added Scale value to Override list. This warning says that there is no variable with this name and value of 0 will be used. The Assign button is designed to fix it and add this name to the graph's Override list. And now I'd like to expose the noise size as well and make it controllable with the same scale parameter but use the final value that is 200 times bigger. So here is what I'm doing. I'm exposing this field, enter the same scale name, and it will set the noise size to 1. I'm using an expression instead of a simple name. I multiply it with 200. Now it will set 200 instead, and will multiply any size value with the same amount. Here, if I change the scale, it scales the noise uniformly always maintaining the intensity and size ratios. In expression you can use the basic arithmetic operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and exponentiation. All of the operations will be performed in a conventional order. Exponentiation first, multiplication and division next and addition and subtraction after. We can use brackets to set our own order. Using dot to cast to float will work as well. And we can use several variables in one expression. The expose override system is used not only to control several graph parameters with one value. Its main purpose is to give access to internal variables when using functions. Here is a simple function graph. It takes an input map 
and with a blend node adds some noise detail to it. This noise node is taken from the previous graph. Here you can see its intensity and size are exposed to scale and scale multiplied with 200. It just has lower detail to avoid distracting from the final effect. And here is the parent graph. It starts with a constant and then processes it with the shown function graph and does it twice and then outputs to height. Now if I change the scale value in the first function it will change the pattern but only for the first generator. Consider this parameter as an argument sent to function. And now I will change the second scale. See the first pattern remains the same. But more than that, we can expose these values as well to create nested functions. Here we'll do this with two patterns, so we will change both values at once, similarly to what we've done with the noise node. Now the final pattern is scaled uniformly as well. Moreover, Expose Override system is the essential part of the brush module. All of the brush parameters are sent to the graph via exposed variables. Here is the level brush that simply creates flat surface. Here you can see the exposed standard brush position, radius, hardness values, captured position, the one that is got with a control click, and total height of the train. The brush takes the level in a constant by using the captured position Y coordinate and dividing it with the total train height. The falloff mask is created with a spot node using the exposed position and radius. If we switch to brush component, you can see radius and hardness parameters here, and set them manually, while the other values, here is the position, captured position and terrain height, are sent automatically. Note the position is changing with each click. If we expose some value in the brush graph, it will appear here. So, for properly made brush graphs, there's no need to open up the graph window to tune stroke. These values will be saved with the brush pressed as well. The other thing I'd like to draw your attention to is exposing a vector. Here is a position variable that is actually a vector with two floats, x and z. If we will click on the position label, we will be exposing it as a whole. We can see there is a vector in a variable type and none in channel label. However, if we click X or Z itself, or the fields, we will see X or Z in a channel slot. This way, we are exposing only this channel, while the other one will be left for editing. We can assign vector override as well. To do so, I've got to select a proper type in override window. Here I've chosen vector 3 and got 3 channels to edit. If we want to use only one channel to assign variable, we can simply use .x or .y or .z. Graph override variables could be simply changed with scripts. See wiki page in description for details. If you want to change some graph variable on scene start, then the best way to do it is to expose them and change graph defaults in play mode. Instead trying to find proper nodes in graph and trying to find proper generator variables directly. So, I'd like to thank everyone who could watch this feature description up till the end. Hope you'll find it useful. Enjoy new MapMagic version. Bye!